Hey, little explorers, are you ready? Three, two, one, welcome back to my channel. Please like and subscribe. Imagine waking up early in the morning in the deep blue sea, just like our friend, the whale. As the first rays of the sun begin to filter down, our mighty whale friend rouses from its slumber. It's time to start the day. And that begins with breakfast. Can you guess what a whale likes to eat? Tiny shrimp-like animals called krill. They may be small, but whales eat a lot of them, thousands in just one gulp. Now, where does our whale friend find its breakfast? In the vast open ocean, of course. The ocean is like a giant pantry for whales, filled with all kinds of delicious treats. But it's not just about food. The ocean is also the whale's home, playground and everything in between. That's how a whale starts its day. How do you start yours? Now that we know how a whale starts its day, can you guess what a whale likes to eat for breakfast? Our first question is, does a whale prefer to munch on seaweed or does it snack on tiny creatures? If you answered tiny creatures, you're right. Whales love a hearty breakfast of krill and plankton. These are tiny shrimp-like creatures and microscopic plants that fill the ocean. Question two, how does a whale eat its food? Does it use its teeth to chew or does it gulp down its food without chewing? If you're thinking, whales gulp down their food, then give yourself a pat on the back. Whales have a special system called baleen, which acts like a giant strainer. They take in a big mouthful of ocean water, close their mouth and push the water out through the baleen. What's left behind is a delicious mouthful of breakfast. Now question three, how much food does a whale eat in a day? Is it as much as a small car or as much as a school bus? You may find it hard to believe, but a whale can eat as much as a school bus in a day. That's a lot of krill and plankton. Our final question, when does a whale eat the most? Is it during the day or at night? If you guessed at night, you're correct. Many whales feed most heavily at night when their food is easier to find. Well done. You've learned so much about a whale's breakfast habits, from what they eat, to how they eat, to how much they eat and when they eat it. Isn't it fascinating how different our breakfast routines are compared to a whale's? Great job, you're becoming a whale expert already. We've seen how a whale starts its day. Now where do you think a whale lives? Just like we have our cozy homes on land, whales have their own special home too. Can you guess where it is? That's right, whales live in the vast wide ocean. Now let's dive into the ocean and explore a whale's home. Imagine a world full of water. The ocean is like a gigantic pool, but it's so much more than that. It's a place where whales can swim, play and live. It's as deep as a skyscraper is tall, and it covers more than two thirds of our planet. The ocean is a magical place, full of different shapes and colors. It's like a big blue blanket that wraps around our Earth. It's deep and dark in some places, but in others, it's bright and sparkling. The ocean can be calm and peaceful, like a beautiful lullaby, and sometimes it can be stormy and wild, like a thrilling adventure story. In this vast ocean, each whale has its favorite spot. Some whales love the chilly waters near the North and South Poles, where they can slide on icebergs and play in the snow. Other whales prefer the warm tropical waters where they can bask in the sunshine and dance with the waves. The ocean is also a supermarket for whales. It's full of tasty treats like krill, squid, and fish. Whales have a big appetite, and the ocean provides them with a delicious buffet of food. Whales also have neighbors in the ocean. They share their home with other marine animals, like playful dolphins, curious sea turtles, and colorful fish. It's a vibrant community under the sea. The ocean is not just a home for the whales, it's their playground, their dining room, and their neighborhood. It's where whales can be themselves, singing their songs and telling their stories. So, the ocean is a whale's home. Isn't that fascinating? You've learned so much about a whale's home. Can you remember some of the things we've talked about? First question, where does a whale live? That's right, a whale lives in the ocean. The ocean is a vast, deep place full of all sorts of amazing creatures, and it's the perfect home for a whale. Next question, what does the ocean provide for a whale? Yes, you got it. 
The ocean provides food, a place to play, and a space for whales to communicate with each other. Isn't that fascinating? Now let's think about what a whale needs to be happy in its home. Can you recall three things a whale needs in its habitat? Yes, indeed. Food, space to roam, and companionship are all vital for a whale's happiness. Speaking of companionship, who are some of the whale's friends in the ocean? Dolphins, seals, and even some types of fish, right? That's correct. Whales have many friends in the ocean. Remember how we talked about a whale's diet? Can you remember what a whale likes to eat? Yes, you're right again. Whales love to eat krill, small fish, and sometimes even squid. And what about the temperature of the ocean where whales live? Is it hot or cold? You're on a roll. Whales can live in both warm and cold waters, depending on the species. Finally, do you remember why it's important for us to protect the ocean, the home of the whales? Absolutely right. We should protect the ocean because it's not only home to the whales, but also to countless other marine species. Plus, a healthy ocean is good for our planet too. Well done. You remembered so much about a whale's home. Let's continue our journey to learn more about these magnificent creatures and their playful habits. Keep those thinking caps on and let's dive deeper into the amazing world of whales. Just like you, whales also love to play. Can you guess how whales play in the water? Well, let's dive into the deep blue ocean and find out. Whales are not just the giants of the sea, they are also the jolly jesters. They love to interact with each other and their environment for fun. Yes, that's right. Whales have their own way of playing and it's quite a spectacle to behold. One of their favorite games is called breaching. Can you guess what that means? It's when a whale uses its strong tail to propel itself out of the water and then lands back with a big splash. Imagine a creature as large as a school bus jumping out of the water. That's like watching a gigantic seabird in flight. Isn't that amazing? Whales also enjoy a good game of tail slapping. Now this isn't as scary as it sounds. It's just a playful way for whales to communicate or to shake off any pesky parasites. They slap their huge tails onto the surface of the water, creating enormous splashes and loud noises. It's like their version of clapping hands or perhaps a round of applause under the sea. But do you know what's the most wonderful part about these whale games? They help in strengthening the bond between whales. Just like when you play with your friends, it helps you become better buddies, right? Similarly, whales become closer and understand each other better when they play together. Whales even play with objects found in their environment. Kelp, a kind of seaweed, is a popular toy among whales. They toss it around, roll over it, and even wear it like a necklace. It's their own version of dress up. And just like how we have playtime and then nap time, whales too, after all these fun activities, find a quiet spot in the ocean, float up to the surface and take a little whale nap. Whales sure know how to have fun, don't they? So, the next time you're out playing, remember our whale friends and their fantastic underwater games. So, we've talked about how whales play. Can you remember some of their playful behaviors? Indeed, whales are just like us. They love to have a good time too. They've got some pretty fun ways to play in the vast blue ocean. Let's see how much you remember. Now, do you recall what we call it when whales jump out of the water and splash back in? Yes, that's right, it's called breaching. Whales breach for fun, to communicate, and even to shake off those pesky barnacles. What about when whales slap their tails on the water's surface? Do you remember what we call that? Yes, indeed. It's called lobtailing. Whales do this for a variety of reasons, such as communication, hunting, or just simple play. And do you remember what it's called when whales stick their heads out of the water to take a look around? Yes, you've got it. That's spy hopping. It's like they're playing peekaboo with the world above the ocean. Whales are great travelers. They swim long distances in the ocean. Can you imagine where they go? Now let's dive right into the deep blue sea and follow them on their journey. Whales, much like birds, are known to migrate. But do you know why they do it? Well, it's for two main reasons, food and babies. Let's start with food. In the colder parts of the ocean, there's a buffet of tiny creatures called krill. And whales, they just love krill. 
So, when it's feeding time, whales swim all the way to these colder areas to have a hearty meal. Isn't that fascinating? Now, on to the second reason, babies. When it's time for mama whales to have their babies, they prefer the warmer, cozier parts of the ocean. So, they travel thousands of miles to these warmer waters where they can safely give birth and nurse their calves. Can you believe that? They swim all that way just to find the perfect nursery. But whales don't travel alone, they love company. They travel in groups called pods. Imagine it as a big family trip, with everyone swimming together looking out for each other. It's a long journey, but with their family by their side, it's a fun and safe adventure. And oh boy, the distances they cover. Some whales travel as far as 10,000 miles in a single year. That's like going all around the Earth's equator half a time. It's like they're the world's best swimmers, aren't they? So you see, whales aren't just big and beautiful creatures. They are great adventurers swimming across the vast oceans, from the chilly poles to the warm tropics, all in search of food and a safe place to have their babies. Whales are truly amazing travelers, aren't they? You've learned about a whale's journey. Can you remember why whales travel so far? Now let's put on our thinking caps and dive into our whale journey quiz. Remember, there are no wrong answers, only opportunities to learn more. Question 1. Why do whales embark on such long journeys? Is it to find food, to visit their whale friends, or is it to find warmer waters? Think back to our talk about a whale's journey. That's right, whales travel great distances in search of food and to find warmer waters for their babies. Next question. How far can a whale travel? Is it a hundred miles, a thousand miles, or even more than that? Well, you've nailed it again. Some whales can journey over 10,000 miles in a year. That's like traveling from one end of the biggest ocean to the other. Quite a trip, isn't it? Let's move on to question three. Can all whales make these long journeys? Remember, not all whales are the same. The answer is no, not all whales migrate. Some whales, like the beluga, stay in the same area all year round. Here's your final question. What helps whales find their way during these long journeys? Is it the sun, the moon, or their sense of direction? You've got it! Whales have a fantastic sense of direction that helps them navigate through the vast ocean. Well done, everyone! You've journeyed through this quiz like a whale gliding through the ocean. Your knowledge about whales and their epic voyages is truly impressive. And remember, every time you learn something new about these magnificent creatures, you're helping to understand and protect them better. So, keep your curiosity alive and your learning cap on. You're doing an amazing job. You've learned so much about whales. Whales are not just amazing creatures. They are also very important. Do you know why? Well, let me tell you. Whales play a crucial role in keeping our oceans healthy. They are like the superheroes of the sea. Whales help to move nutrients around the ocean. When they dive deep and then come back up, they bring important nutrients from the depths to the surface. This helps tiny plants called phytoplankton grow. And guess what? These phytoplankton are the base of the food chain, and they also produce half of the world's oxygen. That's right, whales help us breathe. Whales also store a lot of carbon in their bodies. When they pass away, they sink to the ocean floor, taking that carbon with them. This helps reduce the amount of carbon in the atmosphere and slows down global warming. So you see, whales are very important to us and to the ocean. You've learned so much about whales today. Let's quickly recap what we've learned. From the moment a whale wakes up in the morning, to its hearty breakfast, to its playful antics, and finally its long journey, we've seen the day in the life of a whale. We've learned that they have their own routines, just like us. We started our day with a whale, discovering how they greet the morning sun as it dances on the ocean waves. And then, we took a peek at a whale's breakfast, didn't we? We found out that some whales love to munch on tiny shrimp-like animals called krill, while others prefer small fish. Next, we dove deep into the ocean to visit a whale's home. It's a place full of life, with coral reefs, schools of fish, and so much more. The ocean is a huge place, but whales know exactly where to find their favorite spots. After visiting a whale's home, we got to see them play. Whales are just as playful as we are, sometimes even more. 
They love to splash around, jump out of the water, and even play with their friends. Then, we followed a whale on its journey. Whales travel thousands of miles across the ocean in search of food and warmer waters. It's a tough journey, but whales are strong and determined. Finally, we talked about why whales are important. They help keep the ocean healthy by eating lots of small creatures and moving nutrients around. Without whales, the ocean would be a very different place. Remember, we all have a role to play in protecting whales and their homes. What can you do to help? Maybe you can start by telling your friends and family about the amazing things you've learned about whales today. Or you could help keep the ocean clean by picking up trash when you visit the beach. Every little bit helps, because even the smallest actions can make a big difference. Thank you for watching. See you soon.